Kyle Justice here. Kyle Justice here, and uh, in Boise right now, visiting some uh, creation science ministries and uh, museums. But on the uh, the monitor right here, I have Noah. He's actually Noah Justice, uh, our host of Awesome Science and my oldest son, and we are. I'm going to talk to him briefly because he's been attending a Summit Ministries training in Colorado Springs for two weeks. Um, so, Noah, tell us about your experience. Why did you choose to go to Summit? Well, okay. Really quickly, I'm going to talk about the Summit. Uh-oh. We might be losing him. Uh-huh. Well, you know, you can't... Hey, Noah. Yes. Sorry, we lost you at the very beginning there. Could you, uh, could you? Basically a worldview. Yeah, you might have already heard some of this, but I'll go through it anyway. Basically, it's a worldview. 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 Basically, I don't remember what he does, but he's really big into campus liberty, free speech, all that. We also brought in uh, Klusendorf, Scott Klusendorf. He's a uh, pretty big pro-life speaker. And basically, we're bringing these speakers, Kevin Bywater, for example, just heard him this morning. Uh, no, that was last night. It's a big one. But we're bringing these speakers to talk on different issues, like, you know, right to life, you know, Marcus, Marxist world, you know, economics. And basically give this crash course in how thought and how thought and world you impact the world around us and how we as Christians can be a shining light and be able to defend our faith. Um, and the reason I chose, yeah, after all that, the reason I chose to go to Summit is because I wanted to have a good defense for, for my faith in going to college. And I wanted to be able to teach homeschool kids in my area, you know, Washington, Oregon, how to defend their faith. Well, and that kind of stems back from when I was like 14, 15, no, 15, 16 years old. I took um, understanding the times, just one of some core curriculums, and it goes through six major worldviews that shape our world today. And it really impacted me when I was, you know, 16 years old. And I wanted to get that same information and that same kind of understanding to multiple kids in my area. And I thought that someone would probably be the best place to come to to kind of get a refresh and find out what I needed to know to be able to kind of a long answer, but that kind of kind of gets the gist of it, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if you caught everything there, but Noah and I, as father, we attended a one of the, the worldview classes for, was that a year, Noah? Yeah, it was a uh, whole, whole year. Yeah. yeah, in the Portland area. And so we... Uh, watched uh, and we listened and Noah was really excited about the topic of learning about worldview and different world religions and different uh, belief systems, uh, secular humanism, and it really helped to solidify his faith in the Word of God and why biblical Christianity really is is what is at the top, um, because it's right in the Word of God. So, Noah, what... What has been your favorite subject so far? Oh gosh, you've had to ask that. <laughs> um, I mean, all the speakers, all the speakers at Summit have been absolutely great. Um, I did enjoy some of them more than others. Mike Adams has got to be my favorite. Again, I wish I could remember, you know, what organization, what organization he works with. I do remember that he's actually a tenured college professor over at uh, North Carolina University over there. And um, he actually teaches, oh gosh, and I can never remember, but basically, I'm pretty sure he's into like political science and all that. And he actually, what he does, is one of his biggest things is he goes out for the Alliance Defending Freedom, which is a big Christian, um, you know, kind of like First Amendment rights defense attorney, whatever, law firm. And he actually goes out and finds cases on college campuses where students or student groups have had their rights violated by like campus speech codes or you know other stuff like that that shouldn't be happening because it violates your First Amendment rights. And he went through a whole bunch of stories. I mean, gosh, he's just the, the funnest speaker. I'll say that. 
uh, that I've seen yet. There may be one more. But it was just really good information to get that these are my freedoms. You know, I have the right to say basically whatever I want on campus. Uh, free speech codes are unconstitutional. And he brought forward like case after case, all from the Supreme Court, that show how these rights were upheld. And that he also showed other cases that weren't even from the Supreme Court, they were just on the college campus, where as soon as the college campuses were put pressure on by the ADF or by students as to what their rights were, they just backed off immediately. And that was something I thought was really good because it kind of gave me an idea of, okay, this is what I should expect from college. These are my resources, which is something that's invaluable for any Christian student who's going to be attending, you know, not just secular universities, but even some Christian universities. Because, I mean, you have to be honest, let's face it, there's a whole lot of universities out there that claim to be Christian that don't all are infiltrated. It's not that the colleges, universities are absolutely destroyed our faith. And even when they say they're Christian, but they're being infiltrated by professors and you know, faculty whose very goal is to destroy the First Amendment freedoms that we have. That was just, yeah, that was really impactful. That's why I like Mike Adams the most out of all the speakers I've ever heard. No, that's, that's a good point, Noah. I know that uh, different friends of what we do in our ministry creation science um one of my friends pat roy is out on the the campuses and he interviews christians and they maybe grew up around um you know a christian home as well as uh uh learning about science and the bible but their faith totally gets destroyed because of the secular humanism all the world views and they don't quite understand but how do you feel like growing up, um, you know, you know, doing awesome science and learning about science and your interests there? You know, how is that playing into the, some of the classes and the worldview? It is a lot. Um, just having that background of creation science and doing the understanding of text curriculum has given me it, it's given me a whole lot of that information previously that I already have in my head, and so I can think about it, and I'm bringing it back up as the speakers are talking about this, and I can make connections as to, okay, you know, this is what was meant, or, you know, just, I'm able to make the connections. And honestly, one of the biggest things, the most impactful things, is being able to talk with the speakers in the forums right after dinner, where we get to ask questions, just being able to talk with them over, like, dinner and lunch and stuff when they're sitting around with the students has been really impactful and it just kind of helps it helps expand the information and the knowledge that I have so that I'm better prepared. It's kind of like you're building on top of each other and I'm just becoming more and more cemented, more and more rock solid in my faith. So that's kind of where I see you know, all the philosophy science thing, all the creation science stuff that we've done is playing into this. And I'm also finding that I'm Fairly you say you're fairly conservative uh, among the other students. You're fairly conservative. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, I'm fairly A lot of you might have uh, seen the Awesome Science series that Noah hosts. He started when he was about 12 years old, hosting them to about 16 years old. Um, and now he's, he's going on to college. He's 19. And uh, just really exciting to see him growing in his faith and taking a stand uh, as an adult now. And uh, I don't know, Noah, as far as maybe people who grew up watching Awesome Science or or maybe they're watching it now, but you know what? What encouragement would you give uh, youth and people in college to help them uh, stay in their faith and be strengthened in their faith? Well, one of the, I mean, one of the biggest things 
have suggested be to come to Summit or to get, you know, the understanding of the book and the curriculum and actually go through it and kind of know, yeah. Okay, it seems like a weird example, but um, think Sons and Zoom's Art of War says that, you know, if you know your enemy, but don't know yourself, you know, when, you know, you'll win one, you'll lose some. Then you can know yourself, don't know your enemies. But if you know yourself and your enemy, you will never be at risk in a single battle. In fact, I feel the worldview curriculum, just you know, learning about worldview, if out here at the summit or doing research on your own or taking the understanding of times or reading any sort of number of books, that's what's important about it, is you get to see the other side and you get to see what they're standing on, what they're talking about, and why they say what they say. And from there, you can start to actually ask questions that not only get them to the which is honestly probably one of the biggest things that we talked about here at the summit, is learn to ask the right questions. Not only do you learn to ask the right questions, but you're asking these questions not just for the person who holds that view, but you're asking them so that the students around you, if you're in a college setting, or even if you're in a public setting, so that the people around you can hear the question, and they can say, I've never thought of that before. I want to know more. Because that's kind of what we need to do as you know, Christians in this post-Christian culture. We need to be asking questions. We just need to get people to think. And when people start thinking and you know, going over this in their minds, they start to see the flaws in the different worldviews that are out there. And that's, that's when these Christians can come in and say, how do you consider Christianity? That's kind of the way we have to approach this. We have to ask questions. We have to get them to start thinking about things. Because so many people nowadays just respond to major reaction when they get you know, something that's not position of what they think. Learning to ask questions and learning what questions to ask are honestly the two biggest things you could learn before going off to college. That, that's kind of my recommendation. Wow, that's great. No, so... If you just a review, quick review. Number one, the art of war. Know your enemy. And I think a lot of Christians, young Christians, growing up and going to college, they they kind of they don't know that there's a huge worldview against them, against the Word of God. And you need to know your enemy and his tactics. You need to realize what's really at the base here. And and overall, in Ephesians chapter six, it says. There's things that wage war against us and that we need to be ready. So I really appreciate that, Noah. But the offensive side, not to go, you know, beat people up, but is to start asking questions to get them to think and go, wow, I haven't thought about that before. But then you pray for them and you allow the Holy Spirit to use those questions to begin to to kind of break down some walls in their head and their minds. So I really appreciate that, Noah. That was, that was really good advice. So... No, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for go- going through this, and I'm really excited to see um, what God is going to, how He's going to use this to to further the kingdom through you. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. Can't wait to see what He takes. <laughs> Amen. So I'll be praying for Noah uh, this week as he finishes off summit, and uh, and that God would use that for. Further, further in his kingdom as you get back, Noah's going into his second year of uh, college, and uh, I pray that he was a light and salt and has the wisdom to be able to to get people to start thinking about about things of eternity and their their current beliefs and their world views. So, thanks, Noah. I appreciate your commitment to going there. Yeah. Very good. We'll have a rest. Yeah. This is another part of it. Okay, I have to ask you this question because I asked you this before, but, you know, awesome science. Okay. You know, a lot of kids have uh, seen the series. Did you meet anyone who said, hey, you're Noah Justice? I, I, I only met one person who uh, knew, and it was at the Colorado Springs airport as I was leaving, and he was going the other direction. He's like, you wouldn't happen to be the Noah Justice from Awesome Science, would you? <laughs> How would you say? I said, yes, sir, I am. Like a selfie. No, actually, he was the one who asked if he could take a selfie. <laughs> well, see, so you're famous, Noah. 
Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Noah that I've always loved is he really doesn't care about being famous, and he just, he'd rather, when I've talked about him in front of a crowd, he's like, no, don't, stop, don't talk about me. Uh, Norsey said, I'm going to be the next, uh, you know, uh, Emmy, uh, Oscar winning actor either. So he's following what God has put on his heart to do, which uh, more, more than anything, I'm so proud of him as a father. So thanks, Noah. Love you. And we'll see you when you get home this next week. Yeah, see you guys. All right. God bless. All right. Yeah, bye. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll have more live broadcasts coming up.